Hello again, everybody. It is the coach. You're tuned in to Madden 19 on EA Sports. Coming up, we'll see the Minnesota Vikings, led by their new quarterback, Kirk Cousins, take on Mitchell Trubisky and the Chicago Bears. I'll have scores around the league for you at the half, but it's time for a little football. So we'll hand it over to our broadcast team, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. First opened way back in 1924, but renovated in 2002. There's a look inside venerable Soldier Field in Chicago. This was the scene a moment ago as the Bears emerged from their tunnel. Ready for football are they, and ready for football are we as the Bears get set to match up with the Minnesota Vikings. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, you look at this Bears team entering play. They come in losers of two straight, so they're trying to right the ship here a little bit. They're teetering a little bit, aren't they? And now things could really go south if they lose this game, so they understand the importance of playing well and stopping this streak. Meanwhile, for our visitors, the Vikings, things haven't gone exactly according to plan to this point, but boy, you and I down there with them before the game, they were fired up. And they understand how important this game is. Win this one, they can start to think about a turnaround. The NFL season has hit high gear, and off we go in Week 11 on EA Sports. Now the return man. This is Benny Cunningham. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. So here are the Bears now for their opening drive. They'll be led out by their 6'2 QB out of North Carolina, former number two overall pick. It's Mitchell Trubisky. And no excitement. Unless, you, unless you're on the defensive team of last week in his numbers because the only excitement he really generated was the one interception he threw. Yeah, no touchdown passes. Yeah, and his team wasn't real thrilled about that. And they lost the game. So I know this week has been tough on him because he's been working hard. Fundamentals, footwork, finding the right targets. And bottom line, how do they get a win? Now a play fake here on first down. They'll roll it, and he will not make it back to the line of scrimmage as he's going to be taken down. Ben Gideon able to get in there and drop him behind the line. So a look here at the key inactives, and we got this list before the game down on the field. <laughs> they tell us the same thing every time, don't they? Next man up. No excuses. Be ready to play. That's the mantra of every organization. The key is having guys on the roster who are capable of filling in and playing at a high level. That's when you know you've drafted well, scouted free agents well, and stocked your team just the way you're supposed to. 11 yards for number 11. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. Touch of the game here with Benny Cunningham. Good cover defensively as they get to him just beyond the 45 after the juke. Ben Gideon in on the stop. And with this offense, one guy to key in on defensively is Kevin White. Had to battle injuries at the start of his career, but boy, he's ready to fulfill his promise. An absolute beast downfield. Watch left, watch left. Start right there, start right there. 
Here's the first carry for Tariq Cohen. And no room to maneuver there. Give him a yard up to the 47. This is how they will line it up defensively for Minnesota. They've had their trouble stopping the run, Charles. Currently 29th in the NFL in that department. This is an area of the game that they definitely have to improve because right now, against the pass, top 10 in the league. But against the run, that's where the struggles have come in. They've got to find a way to make sure they stop runners before they get started. Now Trubisky. He may try to run for this. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. He'll wind up getting four yards there on his own, but it also brings up fourth down. I like his effort there. He got it done on his own. But let's face it, he puts defenses in a really stressful spot when he takes off and runs because a lot of guys have coverage responsibilities. Good job of rallying, though, because I thought when he first took off, he might pick up the first down. So here's the Viking offense making their way out. They'll be let out by the veteran quarterback out of Michigan State, the former Spartan. It's Kirk Cousins. You talk about the pause that refreshes. I think it's come at a perfect time of the year for them, hasn't it? You know, they, it's the season is starting to wind down, got a little bit of a break. But how about the guy calling the signals? He's got to be excited about that because now he didn't just get a game plan for one week. He was able to work on it for two weeks. I can't wait to see if they have anything special in, in store for him today. And it's a welcome back to hell for last year's number one pick. This is Dalvin Cook. And he finds some space past the 25 to the 27. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven. Leaves him with a second and three. time he's not going anywhere they'll get him down right at the line of scrimmage call it no gain that time as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go well, let's take a look here at the offense for minnesota mankato's own adam thielen is coming off of a 91 catch thousand yard season and his first pro bowl selection and how about his backstory a walk-on in college at minnesota state an undrafted free agent who made it through a tryout with the Minnesota Vikings, played special teams first, and now is a full-time, big-time wide receiver. Third and short yardage, Cousins. And he's got Kyle Rudolph. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. And that one good for 16 yards and a first. Just the first quarter, but tackling going to be so important going forward. They've got to limit plays like that. And that's something when you see it happen early in the game and they don't get him on the ground, you can always tell that they were concerned about it going in. Because I can just tell you from my days, I remember being in college and worrying all offseason about our season open opponent, and they had a receiver that could shake and bake with the best of them. I tackled him on the first pass of the game, and the relief was incredible. Ended up having a pretty decent ball game. game. But if Offense. I missed him, it, <laughs> it would have been, been a, a long story. night. That's going to set him back five yards. So a little bit of a stiffer challenge now. First and 15 following the delay of game. Three down, three down. Hey, check, check. Three down, three down. Cook following the penalty. And a nice run to get him past the original line of scrimmage. A gain of seven. It's second and eight now. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play caller to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber who runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. Four down, four down. Check. Four down, four down. Lucky 50. Hey, hey, watch it, watch it. Watch that. Now Cousins here on the bootleg. And that'll be incomplete. He was looking for his tight end there, Kyle Rudolph. And now it's third down. 
The starting 11 defensively for the Bears. Second round pick in 2015, Eddie Goldman holds down the middle of this defensive line with some toughness, some leverage, and some personality. Understands he's going to be double and sometimes triple teamed on every snap. Does it with a smile, takes on those blockers, and opens up space for his other pass rushers. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Four down, four down. Check, check. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. You hear the calls for a penalty, but I just don't think so. I think in this situation, the defender was making sure his guy couldn't hold on to the football. So I don't see anything that warranted a flag. No, I'm with you. There was contact, but I'm happy they kept that flag in the back pocket. This is taken at about the 14. They call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And the Bears take over. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. And still a lot of football to be played in this season. We're only in November. A lot can happen between now and January. But if it ended today, they would just be on the outside of the playoff picture looking in. So a lot to fight for. Yeah, and wasn't it interesting in our meeting with, with the coaching staff that they all made sure to let us know, we know where we are right now, but the playoffs don't start tomorrow. We still got some time, and they plan on putting it together formulating a streak that the whole month of December is still left to play. They think they can get in. And they made it very obvious to us that there's no playoff talk in the locker room right now. It's win this game and look to next week. Excellent focus. Here's Trubisky firing quickly here and that's complete. And he's able to get out to the 32 brought down there. Six yards is the pickup and that'll lead to a third down. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now gives a much better opportunity to convert on third down. Trubisky will throw. And he's got Miller. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. Three yards there. Good enough to keep the drive moving. At first glance, I thought he just used his size in order to win the route. But he also had a little subtle move in there as well. Made the defender think he was going one direction. I was able to track the ball in another. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 45. A nice run there, nine yards. And it'll be second down. The success there, Charles, coming on the outside of the field, the ground game. Curious to see if that continues as we progress. Yeah, we often talk about a variety in play calling and usually between run and pass. But in this case, with strictly the run game, you can be creative there as well. Run it inside, run it outside, keep the defense off balance. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I'll bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs, and let's go get the first down. They love being physical. Now Trubisky to throw. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. Daniil Hunter in there to drop him for his fifth sack of the year. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. Well, the job becomes twice as difficult now. After the sack, it's second and 20. Tight here right, tight here right. Now they'll run it with Cohen. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral-type runs, but the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. We got four. Run! 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 Now Trubisky on third and long. Middle of the field, it's Robinson. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. Well, we hear so often how tackling has become almost a lost art in the NFL game. But it's so important to tackle well on these receivers, especially in a play like this one. Third down, they gave him the underneath stuff. You got to go up and make the tackle right away. And now out comes Minnesota. And to be frank, they're just in a tough spot. It's only November. 
already eliminated from playoff contention. I know their fan base doesn't want to hear that, but that's the case. What are they fighting for now going forward? You know exactly what they're fighting for is that word that some people don't want to hear, <laughs> but it's pride. Draft. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to go draft, but pride's better, right? <laughs> you know something? You're right, because that's part of it, but that's two different mindsets. That's front office mindset, yep. draft position. Where are we going to be and what do we need to get? And then the players and the coaching staff right now, pride. Can they win some games and feel better about themselves despite the fact they have no shot at the playoffs? Cousins now to throw on first down. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. Nice little nifty play for him there. Yeah, that's the ability to read a defense and utilize players that don't often get picked up in coverage easily. And I'm talking about being able to use the backs out of the backfield. Because I know that when I used to cover, hey, look, everybody cut. Oh, they just snuck out there, and they just got a nice first down there. What do we love to say? Get those backs into space, right? And they were able to do that there. Nice pick up on first down. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. Now you often say that sort of opens the playbook now, second and short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. Obviously, we've been together for a while because you know me. I want to take that shot early and loosen things up. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. They tried to throw on second down, unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. Cousins. It's caught by Treadwell. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. Cousins able to connect with Treadwell for a Minnesota first. In today's football, where receivers break tackles, make people miss, <laughs> get upfield for the extra yardage, when you see a play like that where it's caught and he's dropped on the spot, that's a big-time play by the defense. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Akeem Hicks able to drop him for a loss of a couple. Let's go, let's go. You never want to give up a sack. From the O-line's perspective, they hate it for several reasons, especially because they felt like they let little brother down back there in the pocket. Oh, no doubt. They have a ton of pride, and they go into every job wanting to keep that guy clean. They want that uniform with no grass stains, no... And he's going to go down again. Danny Trevathan in there to drop him, and sacks on first and second downs are going to lead to a third and long. Enough takes to start to have a good drive. Quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? No, now they're looking at a third. Back now with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. Second quarter begins with the Vikings holding the football. They're in the midst of a nice drive, but facing a third and long here. To throw, Cousins. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. They get 12 yards back, but it still leads to a fourth and long. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. You like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion. What you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. These kickers now, it's like we take them for granted. Kicks like that used to be such a big deal, and now you just expect them to make it. Yeah, you're exactly right, and we shouldn't take them for granted, but I have a theory about it. You want to hear it? Yep. They are more athletic now than ever before. Talk about kickers. Trace their backgrounds, trace their histories. You'll find that they were big-time athletes all along, but their kicking was so prevalent that we made them specialists. Well, and now those 50-plus yarders seem easy for some reason. They go with Cunningham. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. They'll run it now. Out of the gun. They'll only get a couple up to about the 30. Some of these play calls, 
I think they're a little conservative, but you know me because it's easy to sit up in this booth, right, and make all the calls and, and think I'm going to be correct. But I would like to see them open things up because otherwise this defense is going to gang up on the run and shut them down. On third down, that's Cohen. They juked him, and they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. The pickup of 11, and it moves the chains. Yeah, they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. Now Trubisky on first down. And that is incomplete here. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield. A nice job to get eight there after the incompletion, and now they'll look at a third and two coming up. That was a good run, probably right on the edge of breaking into something really big. So the defensive guys right now are talking about, okay, what can we do to slow him down before he truly gets started? Third and two, now Trubisky. And incomplete, the contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Seems like this defense, especially the secondary, has really been contesting about every throw in this first half. Remind me of a good half-court defensive basketball team. Every time a pass is thrown, they're right there in good, good defensive position, able to affect the play. And this will be down by a member of the kicking team just outside of the 30-yard line. And you see Dalvin Cook and the offense heading back out. He's been good. His guys are winning. So far, the recipe working here in the second quarter. And he doesn't like to just tote the rock. He wants to carry his team on his back. And that's what he's done throughout this game. Yeah, he's done that. He'll be hoping to continue that trend. Now Cousins. And the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down? The offense or the defense? Let's face it. If you've got the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Yellow, yellow, yellow. Nice effort to knock yellow. Robin away and bring up second down. 58 to Mike. 58 to Mike. Hey, check, check. Handoff comes to Cook. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. Came out in a power set, but that only served to put more men in the box. And guess what? If you're going to do that, you've got to win up front, right? And the pressure too much that time as Cousins goes down. Jonathan Hankins in there to drop him for a six-yard loss, and that'll lead to a fourth down. Now, that was just absolute perfect man coverage. Nowhere for them to go with the football led to a sack. And that's really difficult to do in today's NFL with all these gazelles running around and trying to cover in the secondary. A uh, very good return that time. 18 yards. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. The Bears offense now getting ready to take over. The results for them so far not that great. Well, not good at all. Three drives, three punts. Yeah, and now what you're doing is you're looking at your play sheet. You're trying to figure out what you're going against defensively. I wonder, are they showing them something they haven't seen or anticipated in practice and maybe that's throwing them off? Or do they just have to go to a different play calling section and try and run some offense that way? And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. And at his size, he's a smaller back. You can get him to football. He can kind of get lost, make someone miss. It's good for him. Yeah, it's great for him. I like what you said there. Sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little bit. But get him out in the open field into some space. That plays to his strengths the best. 
and keeps him out of it where all the big boys are, you know, make him make someone miss in the open field. So the long attempt falls innocently to the ground, and it brings up third. Well, earlier in the quarter when the defense was keying on the run, you said offensively they need to open things up, take some shots downfield. Didn't work there, but they did it. Yeah, I'm not going to change my tune now. I still think it's the right play because when you take those shots downfield, you open the eyes of the defense to what you could do to them, and that may open some things up for you offensively. On third down, it's Cunningham, and he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. Officially a gain of just a yard there, but they do convert on third and inches. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Oh, and now he bowls him over. And give him about five as he gets this up to the 48-yard line. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. Seven here. At five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. I know flashy plays, splashy plays as people like to call them. That attracts a lot of attention. But let's face it, when you're efficient, that can control a ball game. And I love the game plan they've got going right now. Back-to-back -back five yard gains. Didn't force the ball downfield. Picked it up on the ground. The yeah, offensive line, they're getting it done. Now Trubisky. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Trying to get it to Tariq Cohen out of the backfield. And that'll bring up second down. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open. And this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. They run. This is Cohen. And this time he's going backwards. So after the no gain on the last attempt, here they get him behind the line. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. You're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. That didn't happen in this case. And that play got bottled up. From midfield now, here's Trubisky. He hits White, complete. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. They give him 17 yards that time as that'll move the chains. I think it all came together there in breaking route. Drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. Trubisky now, 6 of 10 in this first half. He's got his guys a first down here. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get a little over two, maybe a full three down to the 32-yard line. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping... Those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. False start, offense. Yeah, maybe they were coming with a blitz that time and it caused a jump. I think if we saw it, you know that they saw it. Might have been a little discussion down there. Bad guys coming, pick them up, pick them up. And someone jumped. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll be taken down at the 33, a pickup of about four. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. On third down, Trubisky. And this man complete over the middle. It's Burton. 18 yards there and a first down. And he's the 
epitome of what we call the move tight end. A guy that you can line up anywhere, in the slot, out wide, in tight. Doesn't really matter because he has such great skills. You want to utilize him in all aspects of your passing offense. And there he was in the slot for the catch. The screen pass here to Cohen. Man, this play gets blown up. They'll lose yardage back at the 17. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Here's Cunningham. Looking for a crease, can't find one. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. The tackle made there by Linval Joseph. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. The Bears on third down. They've had good success, 5 for 8 to this point. This is third down and 12. And Charles, this infraction is going to be against the offense. False start. Sometimes you have to get up to the line of scrimmage, make sure your team is set before you begin your cadence. And that'll set them back five. So the false start certainly doesn't help matters as they'll try again now, third and long. Single, single. Out of the gun, Trubisky. He'll leave it for Cohen, complete. Two spins. And all the way down inside the five to the four. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And I know you can't really see it, but that play spells frustration with a capital F for the guys on defense. They covered everyone else, end up going to the running back out of the backfield, and he picks up a back-breaking first down. Two minutes to play here in the first half. We're back to Soldier Field following this short break. We'll remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll join Jonathan Coachman and the gang in Orlando. Coach will have stats and scores from the early games going on here around the NFL. From the shotgun is Trubisky. Escaping the pressure right. It won't be a sack, but it's no gain, and it brings up second down. Well, the defensive guys won't be real happy because there won't be a sack on this play because he did get back to the line of scrimmage. But what a job they did overall. Hemmed him in and gave him nowhere to go with the football. They'll go again from the three here on second and goal. From the gun, it's Trubisky. He's going to dump that off to his running back, Cohen. No, bottled up, fumble, it's out, it's loose. And the Vikings pick up the football. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Partner, you know how often we hear about the red zone, right? From the 20-yard line going in, that scoring zone, getting points on the board. A lot of teams... After review of the play, the ruling on the field is reversed. This challenge was initiated by the guys in New York taking a look at the play. Less than two minutes to go. Yeah, I'm sure the coach wanted to challenge it, so he's probably going to send the New York office a holiday card. They've been denied touchdowns in the red zone twice already. Here comes third and goal. Throwing here, Trubisky. Got his man, and it's caught for a Chicago touchdown. Trey Burton, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Bears are in for six. Well, that didn't take long. The turnover instantly almost turning into points. And when that happens, a lot of teams have the mentality of let's strike right now. You've got them off balance after the turnover or the takeaway. Let's go get it. And that's exactly what they did. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. To return, here comes Marcus Sherrills. Good return. He's across the 35-yard line, right around the 36. And you see Dalvin Cook in the offense heading back out. He's been good. They've utilized him well, but they're losing here in the second quarter. What might they change offensively? I think that what you try and do is expand how you get the ball to him a little bit. 
get him out in open space, maybe swing the ball to him. What's that they used to call in the West Coast offense, the long handoff? Yeah. Serve as your running play that way, as well as continue to feed him the football. Some of these runs now may pop bigger later in the game because of the effects of running it. Sometimes people, after a while, they don't want to tackle him anymore, or they get tired, or they get out of position, or he runs through tackles. Continue to feed him the ball. He's having that kind of game. Yeah, might they get him the ball in some space in some different ways here. Throwing again, Cousins on second and ten. And complete right side to tight end Rudolph. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. On third down, Cousins. Over the middle, he's got Treadwell. And he takes this one down all the way near the 30. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. As the clock will stop with 35 seconds to go in quarter number two. So the offensive unit called the T.O. And now we are ready to resume play. First down, here's Cousins. Throw left side on target to Thielen. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. First down now, but that clock rolling. On first and 10, Cousins. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. They'll throw again, Cousins. And that'll be incomplete with just six seconds left on the clock. Dalvin Cook is running back the intended target, and it's third down. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Again, it's Cousins. So we reach halftime here in a four-point game. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in. All right, hang on. We'll jump over halftime. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. Here comes Sheryls. And they're going to wind up with pretty good starting field position as they get it up past the 35. Out come the Vikings. They'll have it first on offense as we begin the third. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here at half two, no? I would agree with that totally. I would guess it in the locker room. They talked about cleaning up some of the errors, but overall, I think they wanted to be positive with them. Guys, we're right there. Just not playing as well as we need to. Let's pick it up, and we still have a chance to win this game. Yeah, they do. We'll see if they can pick it up. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. Holding offense. That hold coming from the left side of the line. Hands got caught in the cookie jar on that one, and the flag came out. Penalty against them. So following the hold, they're in a bit of a hole here with a first and 20. Cousins now. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he takes this one all the way across midfield into enemy territory down to the 40-yard line. And that one results in 35 yards. 
Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play. They picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. First down, here's the run with Cook. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Wasn't that long ago that the NFL guys really didn't adopt much from the college game, but one thing that has crept in there is spreading things out, opening things up, not even just in tempo, but maybe getting better line splits and spreading the field. I think that would be a great strategy right now to try to open things up in the run game. Throwing his cousins. Flushed out right. Let's it fly for Thielen. And they went for a big play through the air on second down. Couldn't connect. Now it's third. Terrific coverage in the end zone that time. Forced him out of the pocket to his right. I thought maybe try and run it there, but no one came open for him. Nice job by the defense of not getting out of their lanes. The Vikings on third down. Three for seven so far in this game. This is going to be third and 13. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. Caught on the right side by Treadwell. And he's going to get this inside the 30. A gain of 13 and also a first down. I don't know what they talked about at halftime. Whatever it was, it worked. They looked like a different team here in the third quarter. Yeah, I doubt that there are very many trash cans that got kicked over that type of a speech. I think what they did was they analyzed what worked in the first half, what didn't, and figured out a better game plan. They had able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards, and that'll make it second and a foot or so. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. Now a second down throw for Cousins. And that is caught, but he will come down out of bounds, says the side judge, incomplete. And incomplete here, so a little razzle-dazzle on that one, but they couldn't hook up, and it's third down. Third and short yardage, Cousins being chased out left. Maybe not exactly what they had in mind, but that scramble good for six and a first down. He's going to work this one down to about the five. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. That's a strong pickup right there on first down, and as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. This one back to the five yard line, but no further than that. No gain on the play, and now they're faced with a third and one. That was an example of excellent defense there. They stuffed them. So now it brings up a third down situation. If I'm calling plays here, I make sure I put in the hands of my quarterback and get it to a receiver real fast. I'm not running the ball here. They'll run it. Here's Cook. And he'll get blown up behind the line of scrimmage. Back at the six. Losing two yards that time, and now it's fourth down. That's oh, a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11-play drive. Well, partner, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. So I just wonder, are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find ones that get you into the end zone and get you six? So here are the Bears now as they get set for their first possession of the second half. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked. But you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Trubisky brings the Bears up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Now Trubisky to throw. Throw left side complete. That's Burton. 
It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. And never good on a pass completion there to go the wrong way. Lost yardage. No, for some reason, it seems to work better when you throw it downfield or you <laughs> move the ball downfield running it that way, doesn't it? But in this case, if you're the defensive guy, you're energized, executed well, and you caused a lost yardage play. That's going to feel good and look great in film. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. The Bears on third down. They've been really good converting seven of their ten tries. This is third and 11. Now it's Trubisky. Finding his safety valve here. That's complete. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. It'll be a gain of six, and that's going to make it fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. And this is picked up by the Bears. It's been a struggle all game for them on offense. This was a chance to maybe provide a little bit of a spark with a punt return. Unfortunately, <laughs> that spark got doused. Yeah, and you call special teams the third phase, but you see here it can be the first phase sometimes. That is so true, right? It can, it can ignite it one way or the other, and boy, that didn't help them at all. They run with Cunningham, and he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. Two yards on the carry there, it'll be second down. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. This is Cohen, and he'll take this one up close to about the 45. Sheldon Richardson there to make the play. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big-bodied guys in the middle of this day, has got to be priority one. The Bears on third down. Now they've converted seven times and could use another right now. This will be third and six. Play action. Now Trubisky. The Vikings after him, and they get there for the sack. Daniil Hunter in there to drop him for his fifth sack of the year. Sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations because it's not going to fool anyone. I don't know if that was the case here, but the end result was the same. No one fooled. The quarterback was hit. The dive unsuccessful. The big fella can't pick it up. And the Vikings now heading on to the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But also have to remember, they did put points on the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. They run it for the first time with a backup Murray. And a minimal gain here as he's up to about the 47-yard line. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Black, black. Back to the ground. This time, Cook. And very little running room there. He did get a couple up to the 49. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. To throw, Cousins. It's caught by Treadwell. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. Just a five-yard pickup, but it leads to fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses, 
It's understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. So make some room next to Tom Dempsey on the NFL's all-time field goal distance leaderboard. That's going to go down officially as a 63-yarder. Let's not forget about David Akers, Jason Elam, and Sebastian Janikowski, too. So now Matt Prater is 64. He's got a little bit of company up near the top spot. That was one heck of a kick right there. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. The Bears offense now heading back out onto the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now from all the work he's getting. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. A gain of six there on first. Brandon, they didn't get everything they wanted out of that play, but the tight end did. <laughs> and I don't mean it in a positive way. Great job of him holding on after absorbing that big hit. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Here's Trubisky. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. We've seen good cover skills on display throughout this game, really from both teams. And there's another nice example there of them making it difficult to complete a pass. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Now Trubisky. And he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. And we're into the second half now, and this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. It'll go as just a 15-yard punt. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. And now out comes Minnesota. And fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they better make sure they love him up because he's helped them out. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. Second down, Cousins. That one into the hands of Thielen, complete. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. A first down for Minnesota, Cousins finding Thielen. Cousins now six for six since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and 10. Again, this is Cook. He'll fight forward for a couple down inside the 40. Doubling this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat. And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. Cousins throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. Call it a three-yard gain, and that's going to lead to a third down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, a ball may come your way. He's going to launch this thing way downfield. And incomplete. He can't hang on. Would have been a nice catch. Instead, it brings up a fourth down. Anytime a defense can sit back in a zone like that, it tends to create a lot of congestion in the middle of the field. Makes it very hard to slot one in. Looked like I-4 at rush hour in your hometown of Orlando, Florida. An absolute mess. So make him four out of four now in the field goal department, and he's able to extend their lead. When drives are bogged down, he's been automatic out there. So nice to have a kicker you can count on to put points on the board. After the made field goal, Carl Sinell sets up to kick this away. 
And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. Here's the Chicago offense coming back out onto the field. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with him punting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. Trubisky now perfect since the second half started. Seven of seven. It's first and ten. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL. And it's on. Back now at Soldier Field. It's Bears football, but they trail on the scoreboard as we get set to bring you the fourth quarter. They'll throw on first down with Trubisky. Over the middle complete. It's Burton. And he takes this one all the way across midfield into enemy territory down to the 40-yard line. A good pick up there of 22. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball in the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. Daniil Hunter in there to get him. And that's sack number six for him on the year. And on that one, the protection just broke down. You've got to have that leverage, don't you? We always talk about low man wins in the running game for an offensive lineman versus a defensive lineman. It's essentially the same thing in pass protection. Get lower than that defensive lineman so that you can keep your balance and keep him away from your guy trying to throw the football. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. And we just saw another example. These cornerbacks have played tight coverage all game long. Might start wanting to think about a few double, triple move routes to try and shift the guys. Chris, they have, you're right, they have had no room to breathe. The screen pass here to Cohen. And that play goes nowhere. Taken down, losing yardage at the 50, right at midfield. Here's Pat O'Donnell now. They'll boot it away from about his 35. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of thing. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> not one that I've ever met. I got the sense that the defense go, go. created a little momentum for them there, didn't they? Did their job, forced the punt. Now, nice start to the drive. Offense has to do their part. Yeah, they certainly do, but what a great start for them. They got to go thank the guys on D. And unable to get downhill there as he'll take this up to about the 37. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. Delay of game, offense. So that'll back him up five. Still second down. Cousins now on second down. The throw left side complete to Treadwell. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. 
But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Throwing, Cousins, rush coming, and he's taken down. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble, and that could have been trouble. I know there's no magnet in the ball, but sometimes for the punt returner, after such a scramble, it sort of feels that way, doesn't it? He has it, he loses it, somehow the ball finds his way back to him. But atone for his sin, and you know he's taking a deep sigh of relief right now. Now Trubisky on first down. He completes it right side away. A gain of six there on first. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Trubisky will throw. Caught out left side by Robinson. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. A Chicago first down, the former Jag, Allen Robinson, on the catch from Trubisky. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. Looking to throw Trubisky on first down. Toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. Josh Bellamy, the intended receiver, and it's second down. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. Second and ten, it's Trubisky again. After that incompletion, I almost get the sense that he's going to look up at the booth and, and kind of look at us and say, hey, you guys got any suggestions? It's been that kind of game, hasn't it? They've had him on the run throughout. Yeah, and I get that you're trying to make a play here losing fourth quarter, but to throw when you're not set with pressure coming could have been an interception. Very much so, and it's been that kind of game for him. They've had him on the run, had him off balance. He's got to find a way to make some big-time throws down the stretch. And down inside the 15 he goes. And they'll get 14 yards out of it and a fresh set of downs. Partner, this is one of the best routes anyone can have in their offensive playbook. Tough to defend because you think it's a go route, and then he breaks it back on the comeback. There's one other thing you need as well. A well thrown ball. Exactly right. You have a guy who has some precision in throwing the football because of the timing of the route. Yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it. Thank you. They try again with Cohen. And only about a yard there as he takes it from the nine to the eight. That's it, baby. That's it. Let's go, let's go. And on third and five, this will be the eighth play of the drive. Out of the gun, Trubisky. And probably the wise decision there. No one open. He just throws it away. And that keeps the field goal on the table as it's fourth down. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they run successful. Here we go. It's Trubisky on fourth down. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Burton. Some collective exhales over there on the sideline. A big pickup through the air on fourth down to bring up first and goal. Fourth down trailing in the fourth quarter. They felt compelled to go for it, and they got it. Well, I'd look down at my play sheet, and what I would find, plays have been successful throughout the game that have worked at the distance you need, and that's exactly what they got done. 
From the gun, it's Trubisky. Oh, no, he lost the football. And the Vikings pick up the football. Look at the big man rumble. He's at the 50. And they will finally get him down as he's all the way to the 36-yard line. And they had it there so close to the goal line, a chance to take it across, claim the lead here in the fourth. Boy, that was a big, big mistake. It really was, and as much as I want to give credit to the defense for making a play, I do tend to agree with you. That mistake, that, that's a chance to go in and take, take the lead. I mean, you're in great shape, yet you don't take care of the football. But they'll be going over that like crazy in the upcoming weeks. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. Got to figure now, after getting that turnover, they're just going to be happy to keep the ball on the ground, right? This is where covering the football, taking care of the ball, all the ball security terms that have ever been used, they come into play for the guys on offense right now. Just take care of it, and they've got a good chance of ending up winning this game. In on the stop, the former Georgia Bulldog, Roquan Smith. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now they're going to see more people stacked up in the line of scrimmage as they'll try and bleed it out. Now a second down run for Murray. And yeah, nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Jonathan Hankins in on the stop. Now, obviously, that's some good work there defensively, being able to stop them and bring it up a key third down. But if you're on the offensive side of the ball, there's an opportunity, because I know what defensive guys are thinking right now, to stop them, get to the ball. That means they might not be sound defensively. There could be some opportunities. And you said key third down. Highlight that word. Put it in bold. Here we go. And Rudolph has it, the tight end. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. Ran a perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion they would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see a point in communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. So yet another field goal to end a drive. That has been a very common theme. He's now hit five of them in this game. Yeah, Brandon, as an offense, you hate that you've had to call on your kicker so often, but you have to love the fact that time and time again, he's come through. After the made field goal, Carl Sinell sets up to kick this away. Cunningham now to return. And he spins away. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. Onto the field now come the Bears. And they'll be looking to atone for last time's mistake of fumbling inside the red zone. Certainly they don't want to do that again. And so much emphasis placed on red zone offense. I mean, you have periods devoted in practice just for that because everyone knows how vital it is to put points on the board when you've entered that part of the field. And to come away with nothing, that's difficult for a team to handle. And difficult, and now we'll see if they can make it less difficult on themselves on this drive. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Time for a break. We're back to see what happens after this. Four down, four down. So the Bears with the football here as we welcome you back. They come up on a second down now in a game that looks like it's going to go down to the wire. 180! Now Trubisky to throw on second. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. Come on, gotta go, gotta and he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. Trubisky finding the former Eagle Burton for the Chicago first. He's back to throw. He'll leave it for Cohen, complete. And he'll get it out a couple yards on, shy go, of midfield go. at the 48. It'll be a gain of four, and it'll make it second down. He'll look to throw. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Allen Robinson, the intended receiver, and it's third down. Well, these corners, I tell you, they've done excellent work all game long. They remind me of guys in the past who just said, hey, throw it out here a hundred times. Nothing good is going to happen. If you throw it in the wrong place, I'll take it the other way. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. 
figuring they're going for it on fourth down. Remember, though, they do have all three timeouts, so even if they don't get it, all is not lost. Yeah, normally in this situation, when you're talking about having to go for it, everything is in this play. But as you noted, with those three timeouts, they actually have a little bit of a safety net. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. He hits White complete. They keep the game alive, at least for the moment, as it's a first down. One crisis averted, but they still need to move hastily. Back to throw. And his throw is incomplete. I guess you can't be afraid to take those chances late in the game. He tried to fit that one in there. Nice job, though, defensively. But to your point, it was a nice job of knocking the ball away. But you're also right. You can't be afraid to take those chances. That means your guys going downfield to catch the ball, they've got to elevate their game and come down with these in order to keep your offense moving. Back to throw. Middle of the field, it's Robinson. And they're able to get this one down to the 25. A good pick up there of 20 yards. They'll look to throw. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Robinson. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Single, single. Trubisky to throw. And he just chucked that one out of bounds, out of everyone's reach. Maybe a wise call not to take a sack in this part of the field. It brings up third down. Now we're in the situation where the quarterback's got to take full charge of his huddle. Got to totally command it, make sure all eyes are on him. All focus is locked in. Going to call multiple plays and go over different situations and scenarios to make sure everyone is on the same page. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. So he's unable to complete it there, and just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark, really, start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here, or is he just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And that is incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Vikings are going to win this football game. So they've converted their first two fourth down attempts. Not there. Now they're two for three. You think maybe the offense coordinator expended a little capital on that one? <laughs> you know, when you're two for yeah, two, you can lobby confidence. for that third one, right? Didn't get it there. Maybe now the head coach might not be so eager to go for it as we go forward. And some room to roll now. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. Now the Bears electing to call a timeout defensively as the clock will stop with just under 30 seconds left to go. Down to a knee here. The defense still with a couple of timeouts. We'll see if they want to use them. And now the Bears going to signal for another timeout. Go, go. As they'll stop it with 27 seconds showing on the clock. Four down, four down. And they'll indeed take a knee. Now the Bears will use their third and final timeout. As they get it with 26 go, seconds to go in the football game. And they will take a knee here. And that knee will do it. So they snap the losing streak. Always a good feeling. Yeah, I don't know if this one right here when they're taking a knee is as much exultation as exhalation, right? They just breathe a sigh of relief. Finally got a win, needed one desperately. A road win in the National Football League. Charles, you never take that for granted, no matter who you're playing, no matter where you're playing. You take it and you run with it. <laughs> and you know you primed the pump all week in your own home facility. No one thinks we can do this. Only people who believe are right here in this room. And then you go on the road, band together, and get it done.
So for the Vikings, it's a win they needed, if for nothing else, in their sanity as they move to four and six. And they'll return home next week to take on the Green Bay Packers. Meanwhile, for the Bears, it's a loss that'll drop them back to 500 through 10 games. And they'll have a quick turnaround as they're back in action Thursday at noon Eastern for the traditional Thanksgiving Day game in Detroit. I'm Brandon Gordon. Certainly have to thank Charles Davis, my broadcast partner, and our entire crew. We'll catch you next time right here. It's the NFL on EA Sports.